Typically, I don't really like making duplicate videos of the same deck unless it plays radically different. This is going to be an exception. You know from the title of the video that this is a Wildfire variant, and all of the cards in this deck are from base Fossil, except for one. And this one card added in the gem sets changes the way that this deck plays so drastically as far as viability, efficiency, achieving the win condition of Wildfire, which is to mill down your opponent's deck. You Wildfire players already know that that card is Tickling Machine. You flip a coin, and if heads, your opponent sets aside their entire hand until the end of their turn. If you hit Tails, your turn ends immediately, meaning that you don't get to attack, but for Wildfire, that's not necessarily a huge risk because you spend a lot of the game just attaching fire energies anyway. Tickling Machine opens up a second milling option to help get around all of those energy removals and super energy removals because if you hit heads and your opponent sets aside their hand, as far as the game state is concerned, their hand size is now zero. Meaning that when you slap down an imposter Professor Oak, they're drawing seven cards off the top of their deck. It's not exactly milling because they're not being discarded, but you are forcing your opponent to draw when they otherwise probably wouldn't want to if they've already recognized what type of deck you're running. You guys already know that any format that involves base set involves a lot of drawing early game, and so a lot of times your opponent doesn't really realize what's about to happen to them until they've already drawn half their deck. And so to get hit with an Imposter Oak mid-game, knowing that a Wildfire is also being set up against you is pretty rough. So it's a bit gimmicky and not extremely consistent, but the deck has a lot of features built in to help stall, to help control and maintain the game while you are getting that tedious setup for the big finish. So let's get into the deck list and see exactly what those supporting cards are. So of course we are going to be starting with Moltres. We're going to be running three copies of it in this deck. It's not going to be a priority early game. Uh, it's actually probably better that you don't try powering it up early game because you're going to get hit with a ton of energy removals and super energy removals anyway. If your opponent knows what type of deck you're running, they're going to be pretty quick to knock off those fire energies. And that's just expected for this deck. There's not a whole lot you can do against it unless you want it to run last, which this build does not. Instead, it runs Lickitung. Because that's a one energy attacker that's great for stall. It can buy you extra turns to actually get fire energy and try to keep them onto a Moltres. Because Lickitung is a one energy attacker, it doesn't do your opponent any good to waste energy removals on it. So you can just drop the energy and feel pretty comfortable leaving it there. And if your opponent does choose to knock it off for whatever reason, you can just replace it next turn and do the same thing. So a full playset of Lickitung for that amazing offensive stall. And then for some straight up stall, we've got a couple copies of Chansey and one copy of Mr. Mime just to deal with those really fast, high damage decks like Rain Dance. But you do have to be careful with how you're utilizing Mr. Mime because this deck is also running Muck. So depending on what the game state is looking like, you know, Mr. Mime's not going to be useful once Muck is in play. So it may be one of these scenarios where you're at a point of, has your opponent already utilized Rain Dance, or do you have time to get Muck into play first? You know, Muck is the priority, but Mr. Mime is also in there for if you didn't get the Muck out fast enough, or if the Grimer gets knocked out before you can evolve, which is pretty common with Muck decks. Since everybody hates to see it hit the field, so they will prioritize knocking out a Grimer if they see you play it on the bench. So just within the Pokemon lineup, you got a lot of options for stall and control. You want to avoid putting a Moltres on the bench until you are ready to start loading it up with fire energies because if you put it on the bench early game, then it's going to get gusted out, it's going to get knocked out, your opponent does not want to get hit with a wildfire, especially after turn 1 or turn 2 when they've played all of their draw power, most of their search power to get their set up, and their deck's looking pretty thin already. If possible, maybe even bait your opponent into using a lot of their gusts and energy removals as fast as you can early game. You know, maybe even throw a Moltres on the bench just to get gusted out and knocked out so that you can know what your opponent's playing, know what they've got, try to get some of those tools out of their hand so that the second or third Moltres you lay down, you're going to be able to start loading it up without worrying about it too much because your opponent's prize count isn't 
a huge factor in any type of mill deck. It's not a big deal to lose five Pokemon when your goal is to deck out your opponent. So we got three copies of Professor Oak for that early game search, getting all the Pokemon you need onto the bench as quickly as possible. Two computer searches for that quick, precise search. Three copies of Item Finder, so that you can recycle a lot of cards in this deck, like your energy removals and your super energy removals, to stall out your opponent's attacks as much as possible. Like I was saying earlier, Rain Dance is a huge threat to this just because it can accelerate energy so quickly. Which is why if you start the game seeing a Squirtle on the other side of the field, that's when you're going to be prioritizing that search for Grimer, Muck, Mr. Mime, depending on what the scenario is looking like. Four copies of Scoop Up just for the stall purposes, a lick of tongue, a chancy, starts building up damage counters. You just scoop it up before your opponent can take a prize. Keeps the game going long enough for you to keep stacking fire energy and then eventually you get off a wildfire. The goal is to really just get off one big wildfire attack. Your opponent's own trainer base is going to be working against them in that regard so you won't have to get off a lot of wildfires. And as we discussed in the intro, a big alternative to using wildfire is just hitting them with as many tickling machines and imposter professor oaks as possible to thin out that deck even further even if you miss the coin flip it's not that big a deal because getting attacks off isn't very important for this deck you know lickitung is going to be getting off those small attacks every now and then but the chip damage doesn't matter it's really just there for the bulk and the chance of paralysis to buy you that extra turn so it's well worth the risk just to play a tickling machine and see what happens as long as you've also got the imposter professor oak in hand two copies of nightly garbage run to get back some basic energy cards as well as recycling you know a chancy or a moltres if you're really hurting for one late game two copies of psychic energy for if you want to be attacking with mr mime which will be a rarity but it's nice to have that in there and you can chuck those psychic energy onto a lick of tongue anyway if you don't want to use the mr mime then the rest of the deck's going to be filled out with a whole bunch of fire energy so that you can get off a decently successful wildfire attack too ideally your opening is gonna look something like a lick of tongue in the active position Hopefully a Grimer on the bench, if not in your opening hand, then within your first turn. That's going to be very important in a lot of games. And then getting some solid backup onto the bench like a Chansey. Maybe throw a Moltres down onto the bench as bait like we talked about earlier. And then play your serious Moltres on turn 3 or 4. Start powering it up somewhere around there. I go over this in the other Wildfire video, but essentially... Your opponent does a lot of wildfires work for it. Your opponent's going to start the game with a 60 card deck. They're going to draw their hand. They're going to set prizes. They're probably going to use at least one Professor Oak on their first turn. It, you know, and that's not even counting the amount of bills and search cards they're going to be using that are also going to be thinning their deck. It's not uncommon for a deck in this era to be down to 30 cards or less on turn two. If you're able to get off a couple of tickly machine combos, that's another 14 gone. And so really by the time you have a Moltres powered up, you're really only looking to mill maybe six or seven cards to actually get that deck out win condition set. Using Lass is an option for stalling longer. And you know, there is a bit of strategy to it of taking a lot of these trainers in your opponent's hand that you don't want to get hit with, making them get shuffled back into the deck, and then discarding them from the deck, hopefully, with a wildfire or a tickling machine combo. But last also kind of works against the core of the deck, which is just getting cards out of your opponent's deck, thinning their deck. And because they're shuffling back in trainers, it takes a lot longer to actually get through their deck if you do this. Which is why I'd rather just disrupt as much as possible and let your opponent use all the trainers that they want. Let them empty their hand because then they're just going to be tempted to draw even more. One big matchup for this deck that is a really bad matchup is against Rocket Zapdos. Zapdos is kind of a stall breaker in that it just deals damage so quickly that you end up on the back foot very easily. 
Dark Vile Plume based control decks are also really difficult to deal with because those decks are notorious for ramping up very quickly, setting up super fast like on turn two, and then slowing down super hard, usually just drawing that one card per turn. It's another reason that this build of Wildfire does run muck, but a lot of times it's just a race to see which hits the field first, the muck or the Dark Vile Plume, because a lot of times the Vile Plume hits first, it's really hard to search out one of those two mucks quickly enough. Hey, so that's another deck list. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know what decks you want to see next. You guys know the drill at this point. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Bye.